you're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive. Hello and welcome and thank you very much for taking up my invitation join me in the studio today and I'm going to be painting a painting of London. Yes, London, England, as they say in the USA, across all my friends across the problem to say London, England. But before we get on to the painting, let's have a look at the colours that I'm going to be using in this lesson today. Okay, as you can see, there's the palette. I've got some sail on blue, I've got some burnt umber, i got some Naples yellow. Oh, we've never used Naples yellow before, Clive. Yes, but I thought it would be a good addition to the palette. i got some cadmium yellow, some titanium white, and a little bit of Mars black. And I've got my trusty gesso there, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Again, I've got some of my medium mix that stops the undermining the paint. I'm just going to put a bit of that in there because that's all I'm going to be using to thin my paint down today. But without further ado, let's get off the painting. Yes, London. My mother's from London. She's from the East End. Yes, Shepherd's Bush, my mother was born. And um, she's quite a character and a half. I have actually got a, um, a video there of my mother um, in the iCards. Check it out. Yes, and that'll take you. I'll show you when I visited my mum. She doesn't live far from me. And I said, visited my mum. She's lovely. She is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some gesso. A little bit of gesso. Gesso. Yes, gesso in my pot. I'm going to put a little bit of gesso just on my canvas like this. This has already been pre-coated with the gesso. Um, but I, there's a reason I do this. Um, there is another video there that tells you why I do this. But for those people who have painted with me before know that I like doing a lot of washes and things. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to put a little bit of texture into the sky. I want I want to keep the roughness in the sky. I don't want it to go shiny on me. That's sort of the reason I'm doing it this way. I'm only going to come down so far. I'm taking all the... I can wash my brush very well. So, um, just put a little bit of gesso on like this. Now, I'm going to be doing this off the cuff. Um, I've got a reference of um, the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Bridges, what I'm going to be painting today. But I've got that to my left-hand side. But I haven't actually drawn this out. But I will do a tracing for this for you. Don't worry. So I'm just going to get a little bit of sail on blue onto this. This is a one-inch short flat. And I'm just going to put a little bit of sail on blue into the sky. I'm just putting my gesso down, picking up my fine mist atomizer bottle. Okay, um, I spray this on. I've been asked why I spray it on. For those people that don't know, I spray it on to keep my paint from drying too quick on me. So I'm just putting a little bit of that blue into the sky like that. So I'm just going to lightly mist that down. I want this to be London used to be full of smog, smog, you know, not not smog, <laughs> as in um, the Lord of the Rings, but smog as in all the fumes. There's a lot of people used to burn a lot of coal and stuff like that in London, and it was it was it was just hanging around. It was horrible. I've got a bit of burnt umber now, a bit of burnt umber, just a small amount of burnt umber, on to my brush. Yes, I just want a bit of bit of bit of colour into the sky. I'm going to mix that in with the blue like this. There we are. Just make it a little bit dirty looking. Taking the excess off. I'm going to smooth that in like this. So I got that dirty looking bluish type of sky. And that's the effect that I'm looking for is that dirty bluish type of sky. I want it to look like there's a little bit of smog or something. It's hanging around the atmosphere. Yes, there's always a bit of atmosphere in London. Put a little bit more blue in here and there, like this. Put a bit more mist. The gesso is still active, so I want a bit a bit more down there, like that. I, don't, I want to make sure I got enough of this blue coming through. I don't want to add more blue if I can help it later on. I'm very, very lightly lifting my brush off canvas and just caressing that. If you've seen me paint before you've said I've, I've tickled the back of my hand with a brush and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Very similar to the effect that I did on the, uh, on a beach painting um, 
If I remember, I'll put that in the descriptions for you, or in the iCards. It'll be in either one. It'll be in there, either one. Bring a bit of this colour down. I'm going to put a bit of moisture to my brush. Not a lot, just a little bit. And merge in a bit of blue and a bit of that burnt umber together. Like this, just to make that blue del dirty and dirty. Dirty and dirty. That's the colour. Let's put that. I want this dirty colour down here. Let's get a bit more gesso on my brush. You can use titanium white if you want to. Um, the only reason I'm using um, gesso in this particular case is because I want to keep that. I want to keep that um, tooth in the paint. I want it to be able to take washes because washes is something I'm going to be doing later on. Got a lovely little colour going there now, and um, let's just bring a bit more blue in this side like that. I'm going to put a bit more gesso onto my brush and you can see I'm just mixing this directly onto the canvas. A lot of this is going to be obscured so don't worry too much about it. You've got to be careful when you're spraying with a mist bottle because you can get paint lift and what happens is um, the surface of the paint is going dry, it's forming a skin and then you go along and you spray that with a mist bottle and it starts to break down the surface tension of the paint and that then brings the underlining colour up so it basically breaks it down and you get these little white dots so be very careful you've got to, it's it's I, I can't tell you time scales I just you just get to know roughly um, what time to spray it and what not to spray it and that's all experience at the end of the day so we've got a we've got a nice little background there I'm not worried about this section there in actual fact, what I think I'll do, just to get rid of that colour, is I'm just going to get a little bit of burnt umber and I'm just going to just wash that very, very loosely. And I'm using uh, my medium mix. Medium mix is, is a mixture of different binders, basically, with different polymers and things. And um, it stops the paint from underbinding, so I can thin it down. Because I do recommend that you don't thin down your paint more than 45%. So um, just bear that in mind because you can have it can cause problems, and um, most of the paint manufacturers will actually say that in their technical specifications. If you want to call along and read um, the company's technical specs, there you go. We've got specs on all the paints and all the products. All companies do that. There you go. So that's just got rid of that whiteness of the canvas, and I'm just going to get the hairdryer on that now. And I'm gonna dry that off. What I want to do now is I'm gonna get a little bit of this um, Naples yellow just by there. I want to thin it down a lot, actually. I just want to make a bit of a wash. I can hear my Molly barking. I don't know if you can hear it. And I'm just gonna put a very, very light wash just down there like that. I want to I want to glow in the sky. I want to glow in the sky. So I'm just taking the moisture off my brush, and I'm just gonna scrub that in like this. The reason I want to glow there, and the reason I do it this way, because it's a lot easier than trying to mix blues and yellows together when you're gonna get greens. So it's the reason I do that. I just want to glow there, because that's gonna be behind the. Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. That's what I'm hoping to paint. <laughs> but who knows? I don't know. We'll just try, I think. So I'm going to get myself a short flat. And um, I'm going to get some burnt umber. I might even get myself um, a, a, um, a detailing brush here. I don't know what brushes I'm going to be using um, in this one. Just bear with me. There we go. No. I got one. <laughs> Found it. Right, so I want I want to I want to do Big Ben. Right? As I said, I've got a, I've got to draw in a, a paint in there, not a paint in a picture. Sorry, I've got a picture there. I want a very light light wash. 
I'm looking at Big Ben and the, the spire comes there and that comes down there a little bit and then you've got a bit of a thing there. Let's see if we can draw, just draw this in. And if your drawing skills are not too good, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Just just do what you can. This, 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 I love these types of paintings, as you know, and um, I don't want to go about accuracy too much. But gotta, that's going to come down there, like that, and that's going to come there. Just get the rough dimensions. We made to make them a bit bigger, I think. Let's make them a bit bigger. That might that might work. That might work. It's fun doing it this way because it gives you a lot of experience in working out dimensions and stuff. If it doesn't look right, then it's wrong. So what you want to try and do is try and, as long as it looks right to the eye, it doesn't really matter, does it? And I'm not looking for straight lines and perfect lines and things like that. I'm not. Um, okay, so we need to make that line a bit darker there. So let's just put a, a line. If we make that a little bit darker, it looks like a shadow line already. So if we just give ourselves a little bit of depth on that thing. And then we've got um, the clock face is going to be roughly there, like that. There you go. And then that's going to be in there, like that. And then there's another thing across there, like that. And that's going to come across there, like that. And then we've got the we've got the actual lines of the of the thing down there, Big Ben. Yeah, it's ding dong. <laughs> okay, so now we got another building which is going to be roughly there. One and two. Okay, so we got another one, three. So this comes across straight. And that goes down on a bit of an angle like that. So we need to make these a little bit bigger then. By making that one a little bit bigger, and that one a little bit bigger, and that one a little bit smaller, it looks as if these are in front of that one. So let's just take that straight down like that. And this is Westminster. Now I did say on a challenge that I would be painting around the world. So this is my starting point. I'm actually in London and I'm going to be working my way around the world with paintings so um, you might be watching this in 10 years time so it's not going to be relevant but <laughs> if you're watching it now because I've just put this video up then you know exactly what I mean but okay let's just put that on a bit more of an angle be mindful of angles and I t tend to talk too much and that way uh, sometimes I get and forget and I make mistakes but we can justify and rectify mistakes there you go now this building is going to be a bit big so there's another there's another part of the building there as well. So let's get that down there like that. And this is going to be all misty and murky. So let's put another. It's important you try and get these to just to look right. Just 
Let's make that a bit bigger, I think. Let's make that a bit bigger. Let's make that a bit bigger. There we go. And then let's get this across. Now this has got to go on an angle, so I'm going to pick an angle and I'm going to follow that angle down like that. There you go. And we got a few spidery things going down there and like that. all the detail in later on. But we got another building here now. We got another type of building there. And that comes across like that. And that comes down like that. And that comes down there. And that goes like that. And then there's a few little things like that. And this all comes together. And just, if you've never done this type of thing before, then have a go, because you never know. Don't worry about that too much. That to me, let's get me another, let me get another brush, let me get a short flat. I just want to blur this out. Really want to blur that out. It doesn't matter. You just see a shape there. There we are. So if we can do those type of things now, then it's just going to be a little bit easier for us. We don't have to worry too much about too much detail and things like that. I'm just going in between, going between two brushes. I've got three brushes in my hand, and I got that one. And that's all I'm doing at the moment. So let's put a. Let's look what I'm doing now. I'm going to make sure I don't make any mistakes here. So this is going to be darker now in there. Let's get a bit more paint on my brush. Burn number tends to be a little bit on the translucent, translucent, translucent side of things. There you go. Sharpen that edge off a bit there like that. Just blew that down. So we've already got a something going on there now. Just put a couple of shadow marks in and there, there and here, and here and there, and everywhere. <laughs> yes. So, all we've got to do now is let's just sh darken this one edge a touch. There we go. And then we can come back in there at a later stage and sort that out. So, um, what have we got going on here then? We, we can put let's put this on an angle now let's let's put a bit more of a, an angle shape there take that down roughly like that so it looks as if it's the other face then it's got four faces oh big ben it's got four faces it really has and i've um, been on the westminster bridge quite a few times in my life and then we can put a few things or whatever there in the background. Just make the shapes up, it doesn't matter, it just makes the shapes up. There we go. What we need to do now is, I'm just going to put those brushes in the water, I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer, and um, then we can have a look at putting some detail in there. But I want, I want to put something here first before I do that, just to give myself perspective. Okay, that's dried now. Um, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of this 
blue, a Ceylon blue, and I'm just going to bring in a bit of just a little bit of colour here and there, like that. Just to cool off sections. There we go. Not a lot, not a lot, just a What do you put this section after? There you go. Now what I will need to do now um, is I'm going to get some burnt ember. But there, I'm going to mix a bit of black to it. I want a nice dark colour. And I'm going to decide where this bridge is going to come. I'm just going to put that in like that. There's a reason I put that block there, don't I? I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So I'm just going to continue to block that out. Let's get a bit more burnt ember, a little bit more black. London is the capital city of England. It is near as Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. That's where I live. And, um, I don't know if anybody's actually been to London, but there's the Tower of London, there's the um, London Bridge, and there's uh, Madame Two Swords, all these fantastic, and obviously Buckingham Palace where the Queen lives, all these fantastic places that you can visit. Just getting a bit of black now, I'm just darkening down this edge. Oh, no, nice and black. Like that. Just to represent maybe the road or something. I don't know. There you go. So I'm going to pick up my little detail and brush now. I'm going to bit of the burnt ember. I want to mix that just with a touch of black. I don't want it too dark. And I'm picking up my mark stick. And now I'm just going to have a look at this this spire. Bring this spire down like this. Parts of this I might have to speed up because I think this could be quite a, a lengthy process, I think. But all I'm doing really now is just adding a little bit of shadowing detail in. Because it's quite um, detailed, this particular building. And clock is as it is. It's a clock, actually, but... I'm wondering where my travels might take me. I'm after I finish 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 this. I'm going to be jumping on the tube, and then I'm going to be going off to the ferry down in Dover. I might even go across the Channel Tunnel. So who knows? And um, I think France would be an ideal stop first. Um, if you want me to go to France and paint something in France, then just let me know. Um, on, the, on our Facebook group, um, which is 
the Clive's Art family on Facebook. So we want to put in very, very lightly, just stroking down this side, making it a little bit darker. There you go. Just give us a bit of a little bit of detail here and there, just a bit of shadowing in a couple of those buildings in the background, just to make them stand out. And um, yeah, just do that and um, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll put a little um, poll in there. And as I said, that's going to run for the month of August. No, it won't. I'd, I'd run it for a t but maybe a week. Who knows? Why not? Just a week, I think, will do. Maybe a week or two will give me a chance to plan another painting then. So I, I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm just just putting in a few light details here, just darkening down. Just crisscross marks, really. There you go. Just to give it a little bit of a a look like that. And then we've got another, let's do this bit here now. Strengthen and that up. And we strengthen the side there as well. As well. Let's get a little bit of white, a little bit of white. And with just the residual colour that's on the brush is going to make that off white. And let's just put a Sort of circle. Don't worry too much about accuracy. I don't. I don't do accuracy. I like these type of. Paintings. Yeah, it's five past twelve. I'm actually it is nearly five past twelve. <laughs> <I> guess. <laughs> That way we look in this, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? It is. Let's just put a little bit of black in there now. There you go. Trust. We can stand out a little bit. There we are. So we put dark around something that's light. It's gonna, it's gonna make it pop. There we go. So I just get a bit of this darker colour now and just sling that underneath there like that, and then put another bar across there and another bar across. And there's something like that. And let's just get a couple of these lines to come down like that. That's all you need to do. A couple of lines. Broken lines. Don't make them too regimental. And that's not what we're looking for. Okay, and let's get some of this black and burnt umber mix and let's just put some marks because they're going to represent windows and things pull a few of them down like that just the structure on the building make it look a little bit more three-dimensional is the word put a bit of shadow on I side of one of them there we are like that put a bar across there like that just Put a bit of shadow in. There you go. Don't have to be too accurate with this type of stuff. Bit of burnt number and black again. So let's. let's strengthen the side of the building down. Like 
that. Let a little bit of that underlining colour. Let a little bit of that underlining colour come through. There you go. There you are. Got a bit of detail here and there, and there in here. Just to make it look like the Houses of Parliament. We know what the Houses of Parliament look like. We, we know what Big Ben looks like. How our eyes should be making, starting to make this up now. And it should be filling in the gaps, which is, which is the good thing. It should be filling in the gaps now. I've said this so many times this year that it doesn't all come down to being accurate. This is more about representational marks. And the reason I've, I've been talking about that this year is because I want you to learn that you don't nothing has to be photorealistic to be a painting. A painting is a loose, free thing. And like I did a couple of weeks ago with the L.S. Lowry painting and and things like that, it's not it's not about being accurate and and stuff. That's not what it's about. This is a lovely way to actually learn to paint as well. And you can just be loose and it doesn't matter if you've made a mistake because it looks like part of the painting. Or it should do anyway. That's my take on it. it certainly is. Just have fun. And Buildings like this are all dirty grey and brown and things, and we've got to try and make them interesting. How do we make dirty buildings look interesting? Well, we put a little bit of detail in, and we put a little bit of contrast in them. We make them look interesting, even though sometimes they're not. Just representational marks like that. And we've got to, we've got the buildings starting to come together. And again, we got. Let's get a little bit of black. And burn them a mix, and let's just tighten up the one side, just on the one side like that. Look, and maybe a little, just a little bit in there, and I'll come down then like that. So we've already got that. Mark there like that. Let's just put a few. There you go. Simple as that, really, isn't it? As simple as that. Okay, so let's get a brush. I'm just going to put a very thin coat of burnt amber. Put a very thin coat of burnt amber down here now, like this. to get rid of that bit of canvas that we got there. We can even put a very thin coat using this um, medium mix that I've got. As I said, you can use this as a, as a wash then, and we can wash down, wash down the colour darken all that off we can re-emphasize our clock face in just a second so this is like watercolors now when we can just give this a lovely lovely look a patina a patina look there we are let's just get a little bit of blue and let's bring a little bit of our blue in there we are let's put a bit of blue in here like this just bring a bit of blue up just 
pull a couple of areas down and like that. What a wonderful way to paint, it really is. Let's mix a little bit of white just on that one side to the burnt umber. Let's just just whiten it a bit, just lighten that colour a bit. And let's just put a few different colours in to this building now. Let's just lighten up the sections. There you go. A bit more white to the burnt umber again. And then just just bring a little bit of highlight into these buildings like this. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. It's a wonderful way to, to paint these type of things. I'll just go back into this darker mix again now and there's just A bit of white in my brush, it doesn't matter. Let's just put a bit of. I was a happy accident, so let's just lighten that top edge there, like that. Let's get a burn them better and just because I know we've got a bit of. light showing underneath these things and um, I think there's um, these are pillars these things the dark the, the thicker bits are pillars where these these little bits that you can actually see through so I think that's on the bridge I can't see that on the actual reference I'm using so it doesn't matter it looks good as long as it looks good it works sharpen that edge up Bring a little bit of light, just a little bit of burnt ember, just picking up a bit of that burnt ember there, a little bit of light there, a little bit of blue, just to make it look as if there's a little bit of reflection on it. It might have been raining or something, who knows? That's a good, that's a good thing to think about, isn't it? it? Was it raining? We don't know. Let's just put a bit of blue just across the top of that edge there. That just, just cools that off like that okay so before we go on to the next stage now I wanna I need to draw something in again so I'm using a, my detailing brush I'm just checking my cameras using my detailing brush now and I'm going into some black a bit of burnt ember and I gotta decide I gotta get a center point so that's going to be my highest point there and there's going to be another one there and there's going to be another one there and that's going to come down there that's going to come down there that's going to come down there that's going to go out that's going to come out there This is just lines, just lines at the moment. And I want to put a circle in. There. Now if you can if you can't draw, then have a go. Because you don't know until you try these things whether you can or whether you can't. And if you don't want to commit yourself um, straight on to the canvas like this then practice a little bit on some paper first that's what I suggest you do and then that can come down then like that that's going to go over our thing now which is just shame but it doesn't matter we know it's there that's all that counts we know it's there we can put another one in anyway we can if we can alter that and put another one in maybe there somewhere like that and then that's going to come down straight like that Sort of straight, you know what I mean. <coughs> Try 
try and get that straight. There we go. And we've got a let's have a look at this. We put a line across there like that. And then we got another thing like that, and then that comes down also there. That comes down there. Don't worry if that one's a little bit obscured. I don't worry about that. We can put some highlights on that type of thing anyway. Okay, I want to put a one, two there. I want to put a one and a two there. Take it off, paint, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Make that a bit bigger. There you go. And this is the fun bit of painting like this because. Oops, I got a good bit of black on my painting. Just wet my brush a little bit, there we go. I'm going to put this one now. That's good, that's okay. We can work with that. This is just a drawing stage anyway, so I think this is what it looks like. I might be wrong, but who knows? It's a lamp, it is. These used to be oil filled lamps and they used to go around and um used to have a blow called the lamp lighter. And he used to go around and Turn the lamps off and put the lamps on, and then they went the gas, and then they went the electricity. So, and then we got one. We got what can we put for you? Well, that's going to be way down there. This one is. It does going to be way down there. That one. So let's just put a. have a lot of glow around it in a minute. I'm going to leave that just for one second. Because we need to let that dry now and then we're going to work on these things again. Let me just put a, see a little bit more white in there. Let's just put a
Okay, so let's go back to our big bin, washing the brush. Getting a little bit of this light mix that we made earlier for the, for the clock face. Let's just, just put a little bit of colour back in him. Because we went over that, didn't we? We certainly did. Let's put a few little highlights then. Just here and there like that. Let's put our clock face back in. It's Twelve, six, nine, three, one, two, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Oh, it's ten past. Or five past twelve. There we go. Bit of black now. Let's just get a bit of. Mix a bit of white. I want to mix a bit of a grey to go that now. I just want to put out a little bit of Just adding a little bit of colour to this. Don't talk much when I concentrate, so I do apologize. And but all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of detail into that there, like that. Oops. <laughs> I want to put a little bit of just like that. Now I'm going to get some pure white in my brush and I'm just going to put a bit of light there, literally, a bit of white in there, a bit of white in there like that. And I think I'm going to let that dry now, I'm going to let that dry naturally um, because I want to make sure it's hard. And I'll come back to it. Okay, so I've just come back after taking the wife to work. <laughs> That's what I went. <laughs> it was. And um, I was. It's, it's good sometimes to stand back. And um, they do say um, every 20 minutes, rest your eyes and uh, do a little bit of contemplation. Make yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. Go away, come back and look. And that certainly is true because the way I painted that section looks as if that's actually going behind that tower where it's not. It's actually part of that building so we need to address that situation and I'm gonna just gonna darken that up like this and by darkening that up like that that's not gonna look as if it's part and parcel of that building 
and let's get a little bit of burned umber there and a little bit of black to that. My, my palette sweated a little bit because I've left a, I left a lid on. It does tend to sweat a little bit. So I'm just looking at... There you go. Now it looks a bit more as if it's part and parcel of that. Just get a bit of blue into that now and just blow that off. Bit of black, bit of burnt umber, bit of black, bit of burnt umber. Let's just get let me have a look at these. Windows and things. Then are there. Just, just doing that. Just make shapes. Just make shapes. There you go. We know what it is, so let's put another thing there. That. There you go. You can do any building basically like this. Oops, <laughs> I wiped it with a dirty, uh, a dirty cloth then, it doesn't matter, I get a bit of dry kitchen on and just wipe that off, smudge it in, there we are, it looks good. Alright, I'm, I'm happy with that now. It's dark on that edge of touch there. Just give it a little bit more of a character to it. And I think we're about ready now to... Um, move on to the next stage. I want to, I just want to bring a little bit of white into this grey, brown. I want to put a bit of a make sure we've got a dry piece to play. Put a bit of light on the top of there. Just gives it a little bit of more dimension. How does that look? It looks pretty good so far. Okay, dry that off with a hairdryer. And then we should put a wash over it. I'm just going to introduce a little bit of zinc mixing white to my palette, and that is uh, that one there. Um, I, as you've seen me do this, if you've been following me on my other tutorials, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Before you know that I do a few washes here and there, that's exactly what I'm going to do with this one. So um, I've got a bit of my medium mix flow improver, and I'm just going to go into the the corner of that zinc mixing right and I'm just gonna try that that's okay maybe just a small amount of burned umber to it just to take that edge of white off it there we go I want to go over the buildings like this just to knock those buildings back ever so lightly that's what is what I like to win with acrylics and that's why I put the gesso on there is because it allows the zinc mixing white to actually 
grab to the canvas. And that's why it's there. So we can mist down certain parts. Just washing my brush. I'm going to go into a bit of little bit of pure pure zinc mixing right now. I'm just going to go very lightly over there. You might think, why are you knocking back that lamp? Well, there's a reason why I'm doing that. Because inevitably, there's going to be some light coming off this a lamp. So we want to get a little bit of light coming down there. But I also want to knock this sky back a touch as well. I don't, I don't want it too bright. I want it to look as if it's right in the distance there. This is a real good way of doing that. And let's mix a little bit of blue with that now. So I'm mixing a little bit of blue with the zinc mixing, but not a lot. I just want a very, very small amount of blue there. And I'm just going to very lightly touch in here and there with that. I'm going to get a blending brush. Um, this is a pony hair blending brush. And um, it's a one inch, available on the website if you want to pop along to www.clay5r.co.uk. And I'm just going to very lightly blend all that together. So it looks as if it's distant. Looks as if there's mist coming off the River Thames there. Okay, so what I'm going to do with that again is I'm going to dry that really well now with a hairdryer. Now I want to get um, my detail brush, um, which was the number four detail brush, and um, I want to go back into some yellow now. Get some yellow. There you go. Mix a little bit of white to it just to make it slightly more opaque. There we are. And now we're going to put in some light there like this get a little bit of that Naples yellow because it's um it's more of um it's a warmer yellow then it's definitely a warmer yellow. Just put a few where you think the light is going to catch. There, like that. Get a bit more of that maple yellow just to warm up that light. There you go. Get that little bit of maple yellow now. Let's just that's where the light is catching like that. Bit of white with the residual amount that's in the brush. So you've got a little bit of yellow that's in your brush. And you mix that with the white, you're gonna get an off white, which is what we want. So we just put a few highlights here and there. You know, a little bit of light reflecting on there like that. Yeah, I got a little short flat, just a small amount of yellow, just a little bit of a glow a 
around the lamps like that. Touch of white. There you go. Just to make it look as if there's a little bit of a glow there. We go back into our detail brush now and we can pick a little bit of burnt and a little bit of black and let's just strengthen up a couple of areas be sporadic with this just more like shadow areas then and they will dry off quite nicely there I think okay we can bring down a little bit more of a shadow line just underneath there get a little bit of a brush or a little um, short flat and just as that's wet just smooth that in loosely like that I look a bit more like a shadow there and it'll dry, it will dry, so don't worry about it but it will still be dark enough for you to to see there and you can put in shadows here and there what I like to do is something like this, is just bring in some wavy lines like that Oops, it's a bit too thick, but let me just get a bit of tissue paper. There you go, chuck it in the bin. And just smooth that in like that. I think that is looking pretty good. How is it looking on cam? I think it is. So I've started off in London and I'm going to go across the continent now and so it's either going to be Belgium, Denmark or France and I put that up the vote so I don't know where I'm going to be painting next let's hope it's going to turn out as well as, uh, as actually this one did so this is Big Ben and Westminster Bridge and um, thank you very much for joining me on my start on my trip my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk please subscribe to my channel and uh, the subscription buttons are below or in that corner there's a little icon with me like this press that and I'll take you straight into my channel and subscribe you uh, go into my iCards by there also you can contact me on my website and um, have a good day, good week, good month, a good year, because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this, as time is relative on YouTube. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next lesson. Nice. So let's just take you on a little browse through my web page as you can see there's a number of pages there we'll go into one or two of them in just a second but let's have a look at the shop okay um, down here are all my products that are available as you can see there's flow improver approve, um, medium mix um, there's some paint thickeners etc 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 and these are all in pounds sterling um, if you want to convert that to your uh, currency, then just click there. You can see the way the arrow moves into a little finger, and that's a currency convert there. So just to click on that, and that'll tell you what these prices are going to be in euros or dollars, etc. And they're all set up in tabs. So if you wanted to have a look what brush ranges I've got, etc., then just click on brushes, and that'll bring up the brush tabs. Also, uh, very quickly, um, there is a um, free images to trace. So if you want to click on uh, that tab, so if there's any lessons that you've been following and you want the tracings, then all you need to do is go down and find the one you want. And let's have a little look at Billy Rabbit. Right, right click, right click and save the image as to your PC. There we go. And that works for every single one. So right click 
and save the image as there you go and that's that so um, let's get back to the PNC with myself and Dawn Norris.